There is so much that is happening in Sudan. In this video, we will learn about what is happening in Sudan and more importantly, why it is happening and what are the reasons behind it. I'll try to keep the entire explanation plain and simple so that you can understand it better. Alright then, let's begin. First, let me show you the country. Here is Sudan, right below Egypt. Sudan also has a coastline with the Red Sea. Now, there is also another country called South Sudan. Initially, it was all part of one country, that is Sudan. But then on July 9th, 2011, there was a referendum and South Sudan gained its independence from Sudan. Actually, since the 1980s, both the North and South of Sudan, they were constantly fighting each other in the form of a civil war. And if you want to know what the reasons behind this conflict are, it is mainly because of differences in religious practices, ethnicity, economics and politics. The northern part of Sudan is primarily dominated by Arab Muslims, so they supported the government of Sudan. And then if you look at the southern part of Sudan, here there is a group called Sudan People's Liberation Movement or Army, SPLM slash A. And this group was mainly composed of black African Christians and others who followed traditional African religion. Now I want you to listen to this carefully. Due to the differences between the government of Sudan, which was dominated by the Arab Muslims from the north, and the Sudan People's Liberation Movement slash Army, which was composed mainly of black African Christians and other black Africans who follow traditional African religion. They are basically called animists from the south of the country. There was a devastating civil war in Sudan that lasted for about 30 years. As a result of the conflict, an estimated 2 million people lost their lives and millions were displaced and they were forced to leave their homes and seek refuge elsewhere. Then in Jan 2005, a comprehensive peace agreement was signed between the Sudan government and the SPLM A. This agreement also had provisions for power sharing, wealth sharing, security and governance. This way, on July 9, 2011, South Sudan gained its independence and became Africa's 55th country. And can you guess who were the mediators? In other words, who came up with this comprehensive peace agreement? You can take a blind guess. It was the United Nations, the United States and all the countries that exist on the African continent. But the main international organization was United Nations and the main country was the United States of America. And everyone knows that the United States is one of the founding members of the United Nations and the US has played a significant role in the United Nations development. Now officially nowhere you will find that US controls the UN. However, if you critically examine things and study enough to gain a deep understanding of the power dynamics within the UN, you will realize that US controls UN to a great extent. So let me rephrase the sentence. The country that chose to be mediator and who came up with this comprehensive peace agreement between North and South Sudan is none other than the United States of America, basically the US government. Now that you have understood how South Sudan gained independence, let's come back to the present time. I have given you a brief history, keep that in mind, because a lot of it is still relevant and wherever required, you should be able to make connections between past and present. Now let's come to the main question of this video. What is currently happening in Sudan? So this time the problem is not between Sudan and South Sudan. This time violence has erupted in the capital city of Khartoum and a few other nearby places. Now, who are the two parties that are fighting? On your left hand side, this is General Abidel Fateh Al Burhan. Then on the right hand side, he is Deputy General Mohammad Hamdan Dagalo. He is also the leader of RSF, that is Rapid Support Forces, which is a paramilitary force in Sudan. So let me repeat again, on the left hand side, he is General Abidel Fateh Al Burhan, who is the General of the Sudanese Army. And he is also the de facto ruler of Sudan, or you can call him the President. On the right hand side, Mohammad Hamdan Dagalo is also a general, but he is one rank junior to Abidel Fateh Al Burhan. So basically he is the vice president. So basically what is happening in Sudan is that the Sudanese army chief, General Abidel Fateh Al Burhan, is now in a battle with his second in command, General Mohammad Hamdan Dagalo. So these are the two characters who have turned against each other and they are fighting for power in Sudan. And that is what has caused chaos in Sudan. But then simply pointing out these two characters is not the end of the whole story. There is a broader global power struggle behind this chaos in Sudan. So let me give you a little background of these two generals. As I already said in 2011, South Sudan gained independence. But then what about the main country Sudan? See what you have to understand is that in Sudan, whoever became the state head, that is the president, they either came from civil society as a politician or they directly came from the military as a serving officer. 
Besides the president, there is also a prime minister in Sudan who is usually a politician and came into power through democratic elections. Omar Al Bashir was the head of Sudan, that is the president of Sudan, from 1989 to 2019. He became the president of Sudan on 30th June 1989. He was a military officer. When he came to power in 1989, he was a brigadier general in the Sudanese army. Now, as soon as he became the president in 1989, what he did was he abolished the position of prime minister. Basically, Omar Al Bashir, along with a group of army officers, overthrew the democratically elected government of Prime Minister Sadiq Al Mahdi in 1989, and since then he abolished, meaning there was no prime minister position in Sudan since 1989. Omar Al Bashir wanted to have all power to himself, and he wanted to rule Sudan without any external civil government. So he was the president of Sudan from 1989 to 2019. That means the whole civil war between North and South Sudan happened during his time. South Sudan gained independence in 2011, which also happened during his tenure. And after 2011, he was the one who was practically ruling and running Sudan. Now, what happened in 2019? In 2019, President Omar Al Bashir he made Abid Al Fatah Al Burhan Inspector General of the Sudanese Army. And then two months later, General Abid Al Fatah Al Burhan, along with his deputy general Muhammad Hamdan Dagalo, who was also his partner, they overthrew President Omar Al Bashir, and General Burhan got the top job, and he became the president of Sudan on April 11, 2019. Now, how did Muhammad Hamdan Dagalo come into this picture? General Abid Al Fatah Al Burhan in 2015 was commanding Sudanese troops in Yemen as part of Saudi-led coalition force who were fighting against the Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen. It was during that time both of them worked closely. Abid Al Fatah Al Burhan was part of the Sudanese army, and Muhammad Hamdan Dagalo was head of the RSF, Rapid Support Forces, which is a separate paramilitary force of Sudan that was also deployed in Yemen. It is also said that President Omar Al Bashir, who himself was an army officer, he very well knew that the way he became the president in 1989 by overthrowing a civilian government, one day even he will be thrown out in a similar way. So he never fully trusted General Burhan. Omar Al Bashir started relying on Dagalo and the RSF as a counterweight to the regular armed forces. He hoped that it would be too difficult for a single armed group to depose him. But then both the generals, that is Burhan and Dagalo, they worked together and overthrew Bashir in April 2019. This is how both started working closely, and it was because of Muhammad Hamdan Dagalo's support, General Burhan became the president of Sudan in 2019. In the same year, that is in 2019, after becoming the president, General Burhan solidified Sudan's ties with global powers and regional players, including the United States and Israel. Now think about it. If Sudan had to form relationships with countries like the United States and Israel, these are all democratic countries, right? So they have to look democratic, right? They cannot go and speak to the United States and say, "Hey, look, we are from the Sudanese military and we organized a coup and overthrew our government." So what they did was in August 2019, they formed a body called the Transitional Sovereignty Council (TSC), which is going to be the federal government that is going to run Sudan. So basically TSC is a multi-partisan body that is a coalition of both civil political groups and the military junta that is group of military leaders and the chairman of this multi-partisan body TSC was General Abid Al Fatah Burhan basically he created this constitutional body so that when he again becomes the head of the country by appointing himself as the chairman of TSC at that time he should look a little democratic General Burhan then made Muhammad Hamdan Dagalo the vice chairman of TSC So the whole purpose behind the creation of the Transitional Sovereignty Council (TSC) is to make the political scenario in Sudan look a little democratic. And then there is also another angle of looking at it. You can think of it this way: the Transitional Sovereignty Council (TSC) was formed as a part of a political agreement between the military and the opposition forces, who no more wanted to see Omar Al Bashir as president. So these are the two reasons why the TSC was formed. And immediately after its creation. General Burhan the chairman of TSC met United States Secretary Mike Pompeo in Khartoum. Then in December 2019, General Burhan was invited to the United States by President Trump. The United States has invited the head of Sudan's Sovereign Council, General Abdel Fattah Al-Burhan to Washington as the two countries forge stronger bilateral ties following decades of hostility. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo who invited Burhan for the visit 
Then in 2020, General Burhan met Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Uganda. He even maintained a close relationship with Egypt and used to make several trips to rich Gulf countries because if you see Sudan is heavily dependent on exports coming from the Gulf countries like Saudi and UAE. So all these international whining and dining went on till October 2021 when General Burhan and his deputy Dagalo both orchestrated a coup against all the civilian political groups that were part of the TSC. If you remember I told you that the Transitional Sovereignty Council TSC is a multi-partisan body that is a coalition of both civil political groups and military junta. So in October 2021 the military officers who were part of the TSC they decided to remove the civilian politicians. Now the question is what happened in these 2 years that is in 2020 and 2021 that made General Burhan and his deputy Dagalo dissolve the TSC by orchestrating a military coup. It is popularly known as 2021 Sudan coup d'etat. Now the question is why did they do it? You have to understand that there was an agreement between the civilian political groups and the military junta before forming the Transitional Sovereignty Council TSC. According to that agreement, the Transitional Sovereignty Council would last for only 3 years and 3 months. That is 39 months. You just look at the name Transitional Sovereignty Council. The word transition means at some point it has to finish, it has to dissolve. So it was to be ended after 39 months. In these 39 months, the military junta will rule for 21 months and then the civilian political leaders will rule for 18 months. That means the 21 months of military rule were going to end on November 2021. And a month before that is on 25th October 2021, General Burhan along with the Sudanese military hijacked the government in a military coup. They detained several civilian government officers, ministers, member of political parties, lawyers, civil society activists and journalists. Many of them were even put on house arrest. So the October 2021 Sudan coup d'etat was organized because the military did not want to hand over the government control to the civilian political parties. Now the next important question is after the 2021 coup Both Burhan and Dagalo ruled Sudan. So what happened then? Why are they fighting now? Why are they so brutally against each other? Now I will explain what went wrong. After the 2021 coup, General Burhan initiated a process of reinstating individuals who were previously associated with Omar al-Bashir's regime that included Islamists to their former positions. This is when Dagalo started having doubts. See, you have to understand this. If someone helps you in overthrowing another individual or group, then that person will always have this doubt that even you may double cross or betray him in the future. And as I said, Omar al-Bashir and his people used to somewhat trust Dagalo and the RSF as a counterweight to the regular armed forces. And now after the 2021 coup, General Burhan started reinstating individuals who were previously associated with Omar al-Bashir's regime. This is where Dagalo felt that Omar al-Bashir's people will never fully trust him and that is true because the first time that is in 2019 Dagalo betrayed them. Another thing that you need to understand is that if you look at the Sudanese politics it has always been dominated by an elite group of people who largely came from ethnic groups that are based around the region of Khartoum and the river Nile. If you look at Dagalo he comes from Darfur in the west which is a rural area. The Sudanese political elite often talked about him and his soldiers that is RSF in derogatory terms. They used to call them country bumpkins, unfit to rule the state. After that over the last 2 years that is since the 2021 coup, Dagalo has been trying to position himself as a national figure. Basically he started acting like a real politician. He started calling himself as a representative of the marginalized section of society. He even started forming alliances with rebel groups in the Darfur region and South Kordofan because he knew these regions thoroughly. In 2003 he conducted many counterinsurgency operations against Darfuri rebels. So he had a good grip on this region. Even General Burhan was aware of all these things and I'm sure there are many in his close circles who were giving inputs on Dagalo. And the same was happening with Dagalo. Even Dagalo was getting inputs about Burhan. This is how the fighting began. RSF against the SAF Dagalo against General Burhan the two generals are now battling for supremacy and tearing Sudan apart over the last few years Dagalo has built a vast business empire including interest in gold mines and many other sectors including investment mining transport car rental iron and steel so even he has resources as well as power 
the situation has become tensed as both the civilian political leaders and General Burhan, who represents the Sudan Armed Forces, are considering a proposal to place the paramilitary rapid support force that is RSF under the control of the Sudanese army. RSF has around 100,000 members. On the other hand, naturally, Dagalo, who is the leader of RSF, is not at all in favour of this. In fact, now we are also getting to hear that General Burhan has ordered to disband and dissolve the RSF and declare it as a rebel group. Naturally, Dagalo is not going to get scared or back off. So this has actually become the main source of recent tension. On 15th April, Saturday morning, it is said that the RSF fired some shots in public. This quickly escalated in different parts of the country. It is not exactly clear where the RSF bases are. But it seems that their fighters have moved into densely populated areas. The Sudanese Air Force has mounted airstrikes in the capital city against RSF members, which is also likely to have led to civilian casualties. Now the important question that must be going on in your head is, what do the two sides want? I'll explain it in simple manner. General Dagalo is presenting himself and the RSF as being on the side of the people. He is telling to the people of Sudan that he is with them and together they all are going to go against the Khartoum political elites that I've told you about. While he is getting some support from Darfur region and South Kordofan. But there are many people who don't believe him because he and his RSF has conducted many counter operations against innocent people. Now if you look at General Burhan who is from the Sudanese armed forces, he is saying that the army will only fully hand over power to an elected government. And he also expects that the civilian politicians will have to share power with the military. Basically, General Burhan wants this situation to be how it was before 2021. Again, there are many who don't believe General Burhan as well. So these are the claims from both sides. Now the next important question is what other countries are doing? As I said in the beginning, if you remember, there is a broader global power struggle behind this chaos in Sudan. The UK, US and European Union have called for a ceasefire and talks to resolve the crisis. But then if you see, Western nations have very little leverage right now because Sudan has been largely isolated since the 2021 coup. The United States is right now looking at the full range of options. The only thing that they can do is put sanctions against members of SAF and RSF. But that is not going to help and I don't think the United States is going to put troops in Sudan. Plus, the US doesn't have the appetite to enter into another conflict. Meanwhile, some of the Western media outlets have suggested that the Russian mercenary group called the Wagner Group is operating in Sudan and Russia is indirectly supporting General Dagalo. Now, these Western media articles also say that the Russian mercenary group is getting gold in return for helping General Dagalo and the RSF. I don't know how far these articles are true. After the Russia-Ukraine conflict, these Western media articles have permanently taken a stand against Russia. So they will write everything against Russia. But one thing that I want to point out is that Russia wants to establish a naval base in the Red Sea on the Sudanese coastline so that Russia gets access to the Indian Ocean. And it was General Dagalo who went to Moscow and agreed to his plan. So if you see, Russia does have an interest in Sudan. Now regional heavyweights like Saudi Arabia and UAE even they have close ties with General Dagalo and the RSF. If you remember, RSF has sent thousands of fighters to support the Saudi war in Yemen. I don't know whether Saudi Arabia wants to get involved in Sudan because right now it is busy forming new relations with Iran. Anyhow, it is important to note that many African countries possess abundant natural resources such as oil, gas and minerals. The methods employed by global powers such as Western nations as well as those in the East like Russia and China to get involved in these countries are quite different. Western countries often use justifications such as promoting democracy, human rights, women's rights, etc. Whereas Russia and China tend to intervene through infrastructure investment. As I said in the beginning of this video, the United States was involved in creating a comprehensive peace agreement between Sudan and South Sudan, which led to South Sudan's independence. So any kind of mediation from the Western countries in Sudan will come only through United Nations and African Union. The United States will not get directly involved, but Western powers fear Russia could establish a military base on the Red Sea. Now when it comes to neighboring countries like Egypt, Ethiopia and Eritrea, their interest will align with the side that emerges as the winner once the two generals resolve their conflict. So let's see what happens. But this is everything that you have to know about what is happening in Sudan. I hope you found this video informative. 
Thank you for watching it.